In this video, you're going to learn how to hide jump cuts. Let's jump on in. So what even is a jump cut? Well, you just saw it. So a jump cut basically happens when you cut out a section of a continuous shot, causing the subject to abruptly move. This is often used to communicate time passing in films, which you've probably seen a time lapse of somebody moving around just intercut with different jump cuts. But it's also used all the time in YouTube and social media because it's a great way for content creators to edit out the fluff and the ums and the uhs to get your points across faster. And you see jump cuts all the time, maybe when you don't even realize it. It's a really common technique, especially in the last 10 years of social video. But when you're seeing way too many jump cuts, it can be jarring to the viewer, right? This is why I always encourage you to try to get your point across in one solid take. But with the nature of filming online content, sometimes jump cuts are unavoidable. So here are some ways that you can hide them. Let's start with the oldest trick in the book, which is faking a second angle or what I like to call reframing the shot. It sounds fancy, but in Premiere Pro, all we have to do is select one of the clips here and then we go to effect controls and just scale it up. When we play, the zoom in will make the jump cut a lot less noticeable. And for this to look better, I recommend shooting your main angle in a wide shot and in a 4K resolution so you have more space to work with. So this is pretty simple, right? But we can take it a step further here by selecting the zoomed clip and repositioning the footage. So maybe you wanna move the subject to the right or to the left slightly in the frame instead of just zooming into the middle. This will give us some more variety, especially if we have some more jump cuts happening. But remember, you wanna do this with the right amount of tact and feeling. You don't wanna overdo it and make the viewer dizzy unless that's the intention. But I've always said, let's fix it in pre and not fix it in post, even though I'm a video editor. And if you know that a talking head video is gonna have some jump cuts, set up a second camera angle like I have right here. So that way you have another shot to cut to when you have a jump cut. So in Premiere Pro, once we've got the two angles synced up in the timeline, we're gonna make the necessary cuts and now we can select the top footage and press Shift E to disable it to make the layer below visible. So you can cut back and forth between these two angles and you can say goodbye to any jump cuts. You can also switch to two different angles using a multi-camera sequence if you want to, but if you only have two angles that you're working with, it's easy enough to just make cuts and disable and re-enable those layers. But if you're working with, you know, three plus camera angles, you might wanna consider creating a multi-camera sequence. If zooming in or having an entirely different camera angle isn't enough, you might wanna consider just covering up the jump cut. But how do we do that? One way to cover it up is to add a little transition and a little bit of a zoom afterwards to make it feel a little different. But remember, if you have a bunch of different jump cuts, you don't wanna add a transition at every single cut because it's just not gonna look good. So a good way to hide multiple jump cuts in one go is adding B-roll. It could be cutting away to shots that you filmed yourself or you could cover it up with stock footage from sites like Invato, but make sure the B-roll is actually related to what's being said. So if you're talking about cats, you're not gonna be showing dogs, right? Unless you wanna be ironic or something like that. After all, it's your video. So a great tip that I have for placing B-roll on your footage is to place the B-roll before the jump cut happens so the cut isn't as noticeable. For example, if we were going to place the B-roll at the same time as the cut, the audio jumping from from one sentence to another combined with cutting to the B-roll will make it feel more like a cut. Remember, you want the editing to feel invisible, not to call attention to itself. But if the B-roll comes right before, it's harder to tell if there were any cuts in the dialogue and overall making a more smooth viewing experience. Another quick tip here, if you have a jump cut, you can click on this little audio fade handle and drag it between the two clips just to make that cut a little bit smoother. And I'll show you some more audio tricks you can do to cover jump cuts later on. Another way to cover up a jump cut is by hiding them in plain sight. What I mean is distracting your viewer. And by distracting, I mean adding some sort of graphic animation on top of your footage so the viewers can't even see the jump cut. So if I play it now with this title animation, the jump cut is still visible. 
But what we can do here is click on this new item button under the project panel and create a new adjustment layer. And then we can place it on top of our footage, but underneath the graphic. And here we can add a Gaussian blur to it. So then we can keyframe this blur to go from zero to let's say 50. And then we can animate it from 50 to zero as the graphic animates out. So the blurriness is just following the animation. Let's also create a black solid and let's place it on top of the adjustment layer, but of course beneath the graphic. And then we can go to effect controls again and let's lower the opacity just a bit to darken our footage underneath so that way it's even more hidden. So with the black video selected, let's press shift D and add a cross dissolve on both ends of it. And then we can push in these handles here so that way it's a little bit more shortened so it comes in as the same speed as the blur. And finally, of course, let's add a little cross dissolve to the jump cut itself. And if I hit play, you don't even notice that a cut was there. Now, obviously this won't work as well if the subject you're filming moves drastically from one shot to the other. So it really only works well if the movement is subtle. So as we always say, not one thing fits all. Am I right? So if you need help hiding or spicing up your video edits in general, Envato is the place to go. So if I find a part in my video edit that I just ramble on for way too long, I will go straight to Envato to see if I can find stock footage that will help me tell my story. For example, if I was super cold right now, I can easily find some snow overlays or some wind sound effects to add to my edit. And I can find all of this inside of Envato's extension for Premiere Pro, so I don't have to leave the app. So with an Envato subscription, you'll get unlimited downloads of all their assets. And there's so many, you can't even cover them all. You have stuff from stock photos, graphic templates, all the way to complicated After Effects project templates. And trust me, trying to create some of these effects yourself can take hours, if not days to do. And with Envato, you can create these effects in just minutes. My team and I call Envato our secret weapon. So get yourself one too and save some time and make better videos. And did I mention that once you download an asset for a particular project, that commercial license does not expire for that project, even if you unsubscribe, which is awesome. So try it out by using my link below. It helps support the channel. And thanks so much to Envato for sponsoring today's video. Another way to hide jump cuts in plain sight is by using motion blur like this. Did you notice that there was a jump cut there? To do this, in Premiere, we'll need our adjustment layer once again and place it on top of the cut point. We're treating this like a transition, so let's make it shorter for now and have the cut point be right in the middle of the adjustment layer. Then we can add the transform effect to it and keyframe the scale and position. I wanted to zoom into my face right when the cut happened, so we can right click the keyframes and make them ease out and ease in so the animation feels smoother. And then we can bump up that shutter angle. Don't be shy, we want it to get maximum motion blur. So once you're happy, you can extend out the adjustment layer so that way the footage stays zoomed in after the zoom. Let's also add a short cross dissolve on the cut point and if I play it now, it looks fine but the jump cut still isn't that well hidden. And that's because my face, which is in the middle, isn't really being affected by the motion blur. So what we can do is go back to the transform effect here and on the second keyframe, let's move the position to the right or left. So when it zooms in, the subject gets pushed to the side. So playing it now, you can see that the jump cut is fully hidden under the motion blur. You can also have some sort of graphic slide in from the side here to fill up the empty space at the same time as the zoom. And this gives purpose to the animation and it also distracts the viewer even more so they can't see the cut at all. Being an editor is kind of like being a magician, right? Being a master of distraction. And we can't forget one of the most important parts of an edit, audio. This is what will glue everything together. So with our last example, it looked nice, but we can make it even better by adding a whoosh sound effect to go along with the animation. So in our first example here, where we just did a simple zoom on the second clip, we can also add some dramatic sound effects right at the cut to help emphasize what's being said, which goes very well with the zoom. We can also mess around with the music to have it start or stop at the right cut like this. So hiding a jump cut with a simple zoom can kind of get boring, 
but pairing it with sound effects can make it that much better. Other than sound effects and music, we also have to pay attention to the microphone audio as well. If you're doing jump cuts on long dialogue sequences like we do in our videos, you wanna make sure not to cut in the middle of words. To help with that, let's look at the audio waveform. If you don't see it, click on the wrench icon and you can enable your audio waveforms here. When we make a cut, it's best to do it where there is a silence to avoid any words abruptly getting cut off. But if we're being realistic, sometimes we're forced to cut in the middle of a word. For example, if a viewer says, um, and then immediately they start talking right afterwards. Um, so, um, like they kind of go together, right? There's not a break in the waveform. So you have to cut between them. So what this can do is cause some weird clicks and pops when you pair that together with a different cut. So that's why once you've cut down your talking footage here, it's always important to select all the audio and then you can press shift D to add a very short crossfade on all the audio clips to help smoothen everything out. Just like I showed you before, but this is the bulk way of doing it when you have a lot of jump cuts you need to handle. So how do you get that short little crossfade? You can go up to preferences and timeline to change the default duration for audio transition. And as you can see, I have it only set to two frames. So that way I can apply these bulk transitions, which I like to do after I'm done with my assembly. Another thing to look out for is big volume shifts. Sometimes at the end of your sentence, you naturally quiet your voice. And then suddenly your next sentence is a lot louder. So when it gets cut together, the obvious volume shift can be even more jarring than the jump cut itself visually, right? The audio calls attention to it more. So it might be worth it to hold control or command and press on this line on the audio track to keyframe the volume up or down. So maybe make the end of this clip a bit louder and then lower the volume at the start of the second clip here so that way it matches it better. And if you don't see the line that I was using, go to the wrench tool and you can enable it. A lot of this is very manual, but it will pay off by helping hide your jump cuts more, right? So there isn't one method to hide all of your jump cuts, but if you use a combination of these and have all these skills in your tool belts, your edits will overall become better and more interesting. So if you want more tutorials that cover basic things like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Woo!